You realize this could change everything. Yes. It's the whole reason I'm doing it. Gentlemen, I'm pleased to say the board has given its full support. The project is a go. Let's change the world. There's something wrong with the project! But that's impossible! You said that's impossible! I know what I said! We're losing control of the project! We have to stop it! Now! There's no stopping it anymore. It's evolved beyond us. There's got to be some way we can... What was that? What? Yeah. What was that? I thought that was on your end. No. It's on me. There it is, there it is. I heard it that time. It's so loud! Welcome to the Film Pigs. This is our first show here on GeekNation.com. Very exciting. Uh, let me introduce you uh, to the Film Pigs. Uh, uh, this is Steve Skelton. Hello. And uh, coming from New York uh, back there uh, is Steve Falk. Hi. Yeah, you guys all want popcorn? Steve, you want popcorn? Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks, Joe. All right. This is great. We're going we're gonna to have some popcorn, and we're going to talk about uh, the movies. Your popcorn, Todd. Oh, thank you very much. Oh. Mm. A little popcorn for me. Hey, Steve, here's your popcorn. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, that looks delicious. So using uh, subjective uh, opinions uh, that we're going to present as fact, we're going to tell you what movies you should or should not see that are coming out this weekend. Steve Skelton, tell us, tell the people, should they go see Total Recall, uh, even though you haven't seen it and don't really know? Should, yeah. Should they go? I mean, just based on the trailer, uh, Total Recall, it's a remake of the 1990 Paul Verhoeven, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, film. It's the, got a lady with three uh, boobs. And that's the, the new movie, it has that as well, which oh, is fantastic. But it, so with the PG-13, you're not going to see the three breasts, they'll just be suggested. They'll probably be heavily suggested, but you won't actually see them. That's, uh, that's not that's, as good. That's my, that's it's not my as good, prediction. you guys. I don't think you're going to be disappointed if you wait for it to show up at a red box kiosk. Yeah. The other big uh, studio picture that's coming out is called uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, uh, uh, Dog Days. Steve Falk, tell us, sh should the people go see that? Well, I was very excited to get this assignment from you, Todd. Um, uh, sorry, I'm lying. I've never heard of this thing. Um, but I did some research, and Diary of a Wimpy Kid, colon, Dog Days, is a sequel to a 2010 movie about a wimpy kid. Uh, it's based on a very popular graphic novel series aimed at children, and, uh, and the trailer's live action, so the movie, movie has children in it. Um, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't look terrible. It looks kind of cute. If you're like seven, I don't know anyone in it, except for this chick from a bunch of sitcoms and Steve Zahn, who used to be awesome, but now he's in Diary of Your Wimpy Kid colon Dog Days. <laughs> Back to you, Todd. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much, Steve. That was very helpful. So if you're seven, why not go see Diary of Your Wimpy Kid, Dog Days, the third, Diary, uh, third one, is that what you said? I, I think it's the second, but my research was spotty, Todd. Yeah, it's spotty, because I'm pretty sure it's the third. You screwed the pooch on your research there, buddy. Enjoy the popcorn, though. Um, those are the big uh, studio releases. If you don't want to see either of those, you could go to the Art House, see limited release stuff. You know, you could, I don't know, you could go see The Baby Makers, which is made by those Broken Lizard guys. They did uh, Super Troopers and uh, Beer Fest. I auditioned for it, and they didn't hire me. That doesn't mean it's a bad movie. You could go. I'm not going to go. That uh, brings us to our next segment, which uh, actually, you know, as you learned just now, I, I'm a, 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 an actor. So uh, why not a, a lesson in acting? Um, me? Thank you, Todd. I uh, have always dreamed, ever since I was a child, of being someone who gets paid to simply talk about movies. Uh, but that didn't work out for me, so I was forced to become an actor. Uh, if you are in the same boat, I, I can actually help you. And I'm here uh, to uh, give a little lesson about acting, uh, specifically the importance of yelling 
in acting. I, I will now demonstrate uh, my scene partner, Steve uh, Skelton, is here to work with me. We're going to use a scene from the Tony Scott classic Crimson Tide um, to really show you the difference between yelling acting and non-yelling acting. We're going to start the scene without yelling. You ready, Steve? Mm. I'm ready. Okay, take it away. As commanding officer of the USS Alabama, I order you to place the XO under arrest under charges of mutiny. I will act backed by the rules of precedence. I say again, Authority as commanding command, officer of the USS Alabama, I order you to place the XO under arrest I relieve under you of charges your command, of mutiny. Captain. See? Not very good. But if you add yelling, watch. <clears throat> As commanding officer of the USS Alabama, I order you to place the XO under arrest under charges of mutiny. I will act back by the rules of precedent. I say Authority again, and as command, commanding officer of the USS Alabama, 15, I order you I to place the XO under arrest under charges of mutiny. Captain, 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 Thank you, my love, the, and you are about, I owe you, a bunch of Andorra mutiny! All of that, brought by the ruin of that! I got it again! Thank you, my love, the, and the U.S. and the power, I owe you to my dad, and I don't want you to die! Too much, you see? Thank you, Steve, very much. One of the hardest types of acting is phone acting pretending you're talking on the phone when there's really no one on the other end. Yelling can help you quite a bit here. Now, masterful phone actor Steve Falk is going to demonstrate this with Mr. Skelton. Watch first without yelling. Fuck you and your two million. Don't you understand English, you useless piece of shit? No money, none. Fuck you, I'll fucking kill him right now. You kill him, you kill yourself, you motherfucker. Now give me back my son. Now let's look at the same scene again, but with yelling. Fuck you and your two million. Don't you understand English, you useless piece of shit? No money, none. Fuck you, I'll fucking kill him right now. You kill him, you kill yourself, you motherfucker. Give me back my son. But don't take it too far. Fuck you, you two million. Don't you understand English, you are a bunch of no, I, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, Just imagine Al Pacino without yelling in the trailer for any given Sunday. Stephen Falk, would you please demonstrate? Very good. And now with yelling, please. See, that's much better. But remember, do not take it too far. There you have it, the importance of yelling in acting. Back to you, Todd. All right, thanks, me. Uh, did you guys learn from that acting lesson? Was it? That, that was amazing, yeah, it was really, I mean, it was... Yeah. What we do is we have these sort of knee-jerk reactions to the movies we see. Normal critics, you see, they see the movies and then they think about them really hard and they're very thoughtful and they try to figure out yeah. what went wrong and what went right. No. We don't do that. We just uh, complain. So uh, we're going to look at Steve. Uh, what was the movie you saw, Steve Falk? Uh, I saw a movie called Ruby Sparks. He saw a movie called Ruby Sparks. Let's look at uh, Steve's knee-jerk reaction to the movie Ruby Sparks that he recorded on his phone. Hey everybody, I saw a movie called Ruby Sparks. It's a little indie movie with uh, Paul Dano and Zoe Kazan, and I think she wrote it, and I think she's a famous scion. And um, uh, it was directed by uh, Ferris and Dayton, or whatever the fuck their names are, and they uh, directed Little Miss Sunshine. And it's sort of a riff on the Max Ma Ma Manic Pixie Dream Girl vibe. It has some magical realism, which they played pretty straight, which I enjoyed. Paul Dano plays it serious, but he's pretty good. Um, and Zo Zoe Kazan, you gotta like her charm. You gotta kind of dig her. And she's all right, you know. I don't really have a problem with her. Um, the movie's charming. Um, 
and uh, it was funny and didn't take itself too seriously. And it kind of bought into the wacky premise about a writer who makes a girl up by mistake because he's lonely and he used to be famous. And uh, uh, I give it, uh, <laughs> I don't know, go see it. Let's just end with one segment uh, that uh, I, I always enjoy doing. Um, we've done it in our podcast in the past. Um, it's called, uh, hey, pigs, how you doing? It's just a chance for you guys to really get to know the pigs. Hey, Steve Falk, how you doing? I live in front of a brick wall, Todd. Great. Hey, Steve Skelton, how you doing? I'm a little warm under the lights right now, but feeling pretty good about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, your head's a little shiny, it's but just a little, I don't know yeah. if the cameras will necessarily no, pick no, that up. No one will notice. And um, for m myself, th thanks for asking, you guys. How are you doing, Todd? Other than the Baby Makers snub, I'm fine. I'm fine. It would have been nice to be in the Baby Makers. All right, that's it for the pigs. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.